security line. Life can be unpredictable, and you may get stuck in a huge traffic jam, being a mere 5 minutes away from the airport. As you're running up to the security check, terribly late and close to panic, your first instinct might be to ask other passengers to let you cut the line. This behavior, though, is bad airport manners. Ask an airport staff member to help you deal with the situation. And don't force your fellow travelers into a moral dilemma. Should they refuse and look insensitive? Or say yes and risk missing their own flight? Do not ask strangers to look after your belongings. It's not only risky, can you really trust someone you see for the first time in life? But it can also inconvenience that person. Imagine getting stuck in a Starbucks line while the kind-hearted stranger is waiting for you out there with your bags. Time passes and it's their boarding time. Or their name gets called. What now? Should they leave your stuff not to miss their flight or wait until you get your daily dose of caffeine? Please, don't make them choose. Be understanding if a security agent doesn't seem overly polite. Security agents have a lot to deal with. They have to repeat the same information to thousands of travelers. Hundreds of these travelers will still forget to remove their liquids from suitcases and put laptops in separate bins. No wonder agents may look tired and unenthusiastic. The only thing you can do is listen to what they say and never, ever, ever argue with staff members. Switching seats is a touchy topic. One of the main unspoken rules when it comes to seat switching is offer only an equivalent or better option. For example, if you ask someone to swap their economy aisle seat for a higher class middle seat, it might pass as a valid offer. But asking for a window seat while offering a middle one in the same class? Unacceptable. If you're asked to switch seats with another passenger, feel free to decline politely. You don't have to give any explanation, especially if you've paid for additional comfort, like more legroom. Do not grab seatbacks on your way to the lavatory. Imagine how irritating it is for aisle passengers to have their seats yank every time someone is passing by. For the same reason, don't use the back of the seat in front of you to pull yourself out of your chair every time you get up. Do not just half-stand while your neighbor is trying to get out of their seat. If you're unwilling to leave your chair, your neighbor will have to crawl over your lap while they're trying to squeeze by. That's too close for comfort for everyone involved in this awkward situation. The only way to save face is to unbuckle your seatbelt, step into the aisle, and wait until your neighbor leaves their seat. No bare feet on the plane. It's one of the biggest no-nos of air travel, even if we omit the topic of unpleasant odors. Picture several hundred passengers removing their shoes and socks at once. The airplane floor is extremely filthy. People with contagious foot problems could be walking the aisles barefoot. There's likely to be a lot of dirt left after previous passengers. And don't even get me started on the floor in the bathrooms. If your feet need some freedom, take off your shoes, but at least leave your socks on. Or bring a pair of light slippers. If you can't lift your bag to the overhead bin, it's probably too heavy to be carry-on. Flight attendants don't have to help you with your suitcase or bag. If it's too heavy to be lifted, think about how many people may get injured if it falls out during turbulence. Plus, overhead bins can withstand only so much weight. And if you try to stuff your mega-heavy luggage inside, they could collapse. Always try to store your bag over your seat. One day, you may come up to your seat and see that the overhead bin is already packed, even though there's nobody in your row yet. Some passengers like to store their carry-on luggage one or two rows ahead, so that they can keep an eye on their belongings. Well, first, hand luggage theft is almost unheard of. Plus, such a tactic is only problematic. Travelers with occupied overhead bins have to look for a free spot. Then they squeeze their way back to their seats. The next wave of displaced passengers start to search for a free space and so on. The end result? Confusion and flight delays. And now, let's see how airplane etiquette differs depending on your seat. If you travel in a window seat, you're in charge of the window shade. It gives you a lot of advantages. If you want to look at the clouds, open the blind. If the sun is bothering you, close it. But if you see that the glare prevents your neighbor from seeing their screen, Pull the blind down. If your seatmate wants to take pictures, 
Lean back and let them have a great shot. Try your best to visit the bathroom when your middle or aisle seat neighbor goes there. Don't make them stand up twice if you can prevent it. If you're a middle seat occupant, well, you have my condolences. You have all the rights to claim the armrests on both sides. Don't spread your knees, though. They have to stay in. When the farthest seat is getting their drink from a flight attendant, help pass it. You could also find yourself in charge of passing the aisle seatmate's request to the window seat neighbor. Sitting in an aisle seat puts a lot of responsibility on your shoulders. You might have to get up the most often to let the others out. Please do it without complaining, huffing, or eye-rolling. You're supposed to use just one armrest, the aisle side one. Always keep your feet and legs out of the aisle. They could get bumped by food carts or trip passengers taking a stroll. You're also the nearest person to the in-flight call button. It'll be your responsibility for the whole roll. Don't eat smelly food on a plane. The cabin air is stuffy enough. Please don't add an aroma of fast food, eggs, or fish to it. If you won't get a meal during the flight, bring along some dry snacks like dried fruit, nuts, or crackers. Avoid reclining your seat unless it's absolutely necessary. If you've ever flown economy, you know how cramped the seats are and how little personal space each passenger has. If you must recline your seat, for example, on a lengthy or overnight flight, or if you have back problems, always warn the person in the seat behind you. Otherwise, you could accidentally hit them, knock their food tray over, spill their drink, or even break their laptop, which happens unnervingly often. Keep your conversation short. Even if you've just come across your new best friend and your similar interests keep the dialogue flowing, remember that other passengers might not be as happy about this fateful meeting. When all you want is to close your eyes and have a nap, the last thing you need is people chatting nearby. Statistically, 83% of passengers think that all communication on a plane should be limited to a smile and a greeting. Avoid personal grooming activities. It doesn't mean you can't put on some hand lotion or soothe your dry eyes with drops. But if you really must brush your hair, trim your nails, or clean your ears right now, head for the airplane lavatory. Do not crowd the baggage claim belt. Leave at least several feet of space between you and the baggage carousel. This way, if someone sees their bag approaching, they'll easily swoop in and get it. Standing up against the belt won't make your suitcase appear any faster. Got all that?